just moments, the current U.S. president will debate the former U.S. president as their party's presumptive nominees, a first in American, American history. history. We want to welcome, welcome our viewers, viewers in, the in the United States, States and, around and around the world to our studios in Atlanta. Atlanta. This, is, this is the CNN presidential, presidential debate. This debate is being produced by CNN and is coming to you live on CNN, CNN International, CNN.com, CNN Max, and CNN Espanol. This is a pivotal moment between President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump in their rematch for the nation. I want to welcome you guys back to the Fatal Wrath channel. This is a reaction to the debate that occurred this last week between former President Trump and current President Biden. I am going to be doing a reaction to this and put in a little bit of my own opinions. If you do not want to hear brutal political honesty, then I suggest you turn this off. Because I'm not holding nothing back on this. So, let's go. And yeah, I just might pause this every now and then. Be turned on, and his opponent's microphone will be turned off. Should a candidate interrupt when his microphone is muted, it will be difficult to understand for viewers at home. At the end of the debate, each candidate will get two minutes for closing statements. There is no studio audience tonight. Pre-written notes, props, or contact with campaign staff are not permitted during the debate. By accepting our invitation to debate both candidates and their campaigns, agreed to accept these polls. Now, please welcome the 46th President of the United States, Joe Biden. Let's begin the debate and let's start with the issue that voters consistently say is their top concern, the economy. President Biden, inflation has slowed, but prices remain high. Since you took office, the price of essentials has increased. For example, a basket of groceries that cost $100 then now costs more than $120. Typical home prices have jumped more than 30%. What do you say to voters who feel they are worse off under your presidency than they were under President Trump? I got to take a look at what I was with on the Not with Mr. Trump, but we had an economy that was in free fall. Pandemic was so badly handled. My first reaction to this is, is Biden a little bit hoarse? Barely understand it. And so what we had to do was try to put things Thank in goodness for closed caps. What a time to have your voice go hoarse on you when you need to do an important debate. That's going to make it easy to say I haven't understood a thing that this guy even said. So I think first this should have been rescheduled. You want to notice he actually is trying to answer the question. Take note of this as we await for Donald Trump to respond. We now we brought down the price of prescription drugs, which is a major issue for many people. To fifteen dollars for, for uh, an insulin shot, that's more than four hundred dollars. No senior has to pay more than two hundred dollars for any drug. All drugs that you're going to be getting next year. In a situation, we're going to make that available to everybody, to all Americans. 
kitchen. So we're working to bring down the price of the private kitchen table. That's what we're going to get done. Thank you, President Trump. We have the greatest economy in the history of our country. And we have never done so well. Everybody was amazed by it. Other countries were copying us. We got hit with COVID. And when we did, we spent the money necessary so we wouldn't end up in the Great Depression, the likes of which we had in 1929. By the time we finished, so we did a great job. We got a lot of credit for the economy, a lot of credit for the military, and no wars, and so many other things. Everything was rocking good. But the thing we never got the credit for, and we should have, is getting us out of that COVID mess. Uh, he created mandates that was a disaster for our country. But other than that, we had we had given them back a, a country where the stock market actually was higher than pre-COVID, and nobody thought that was even possible. Uh, the only jobs he created are for illegal immigrants and bounce-back jobs, the bounce-back from the COVID. He has not done a good job. He's done a poor job, and inflation's killing our country. It is absolutely killing us. Thank you, President Biden. Well, look, the greatest economy in the world, but right? he's the only one to fix that, I think. Mean, I don't know anybody else to fix the greatest economy in the world. And, you know, the fact of the matter is that... Uh, we find ourselves in a situation where it's kind of notice that Trump was trying to answer the question, but did a lot of backlash onto Biden rather than answer the question, kind of gave more of his own personal opinion about it. He's going to be doing a lot of lashing out. At Biden, but you know that for those who have already seen this, it's just going to get worse. This century that doesn't have any this this decade that doesn't have any troops dying anywhere in the world like he did. Uh, President Trump, uh, I want to follow up if I can. If you want to respond to him, well, I'm going to ask you a follow up. You can do whatever you want with the minute that we give you. Uh, I, I want to follow up. You want to impose a 10% tariff on all goods coming into the U.S. To ensure that that doesn't drive prices even higher. It's not going to drive them higher. It's just going to cost countries that have been ripping us off for years, like China and many others, in all fairness to China. It's going to just force them to pay us a lot of money, reduce our deficit tremendously, and give us a lot of power for other things. But he would made a statement. The only thing he was right about is I gave you the largest tax cut in history. I also gave you the largest regulation cut in history. That's why we had all the jobs. And the jobs went down, and then they bounced back, and he's taking credit for so the now. Back. Trying to answer the question, but now back to lashing out at Biden. Whereas you can see Biden wasn't really doing that to him right away. Funny, like a bunch of people that didn't know what they were doing, and they don't know what they were doing. It was the worst, probably the worst administration in history. There's never been. And as far as Afghanistan is concerned, I was getting out of Afghanistan, but we're getting out with dignity, with strength, with power. He got out. It was the most embarrassing day in the history of our country's life. President Trump, over the last eight years, under both of your administrations, the national debt soared to record highs. And according to a new nonpartisan analysis, President Trump, your administration approved $8.4 trillion in new debt. Well, so far, President Biden, you've approved $4.3 trillion in new debt. So, former President Trump, many of the tax cuts that you signed into law are set to expire next year. You want to extend them and go even further, you said. With the U.S. facing trillion-dollar deficits and record debt, why should top earners and corporations pay even less in taxes than they do now? Because the tax cuts spurred the greatest economy that we've ever seen just prior to COVID. And even after COVID, it was so strong that we were able to get through COVID much better than just about any other country. But we spurred, that tax spurred. Now, when we cut the taxes, as an example, the uh, corporate tax was cut down to 21% from 39% plus beyond that. Uh, we took in more revenue with much less tax, and companies were bringing back trillions of dollars back into our country. The country was going like never before, and we were ready to start paying down debt. We were ready to start using the liquid gold right under our feet, the oil and gas right under our feet. We were going to have something that nobody else has had. We got hit with COVID. We did a lot to fix it. I gave him an unbelievable situation with all of the therapeutics and all of the things that we came up with. We gave him something great. Remember, more people died 
under, under his administration, even though we had largely fixed it. More people died under his administration than our administration, and we were right in the middle of it, something which a lot of people don't like to talk about. But yet far more people died in his administration. He did the Isn't that because it, COVID the kind of started the vaccine, which is the thing that at his administration? About the vaccine. And he did a very poor job, just a very poor so job. So why? And I will tell you, not only poor there, but throughout just the entire world. Just bash Biden. I mean, as a country. we didn't you know, know what COVID was going to do back in 2020. And now it's suddenly his fault? Trying to go after his political so all of the things is that done, saying that if it was Trump's shame. administration that all this would suddenly be his fault? And will. Why he allowed I mean, come on. To come in here from prisons, you can't be more of a dumbass than that. To come into our country and destroy our country. President Trump, we will get to immigration uh, later in this block. President Biden, uh, I want to give you an opportunity to respond to this question about the national debt. You have the largest national debt of any president for your period, number one. Number two, he's got two trillion dollar tax cut benefit the very wealthy. When I went on to do fix taxes, and for example, uh, we have a thousand trillionaires in America, I mean, a billionaire in America. And what's happening? Well, the thing about the national debt between these two, both of them kind of raised it as opposed to lowering it. So. Really throwing it back at each one of them doesn't really do much of any good. But it is true. It, it really did get raised under Trump. Something more. <laughs> we finally beat Medicare. Thank you, President, uh, by President Trump. We already did beat Medicare. He beat it to death, and he's destroying Medicare because all of these people are coming in. They're putting them on Medicare. They're putting them on Social Security. They're going to destroy Social Security. This man is going to single-handedly destroy Social Security. These millions and millions of people coming in. There he goes again with his uh, speech about, oh, he's going to destroy Social Security. This man is going to destroy Social Security. Dude, you don't need to say it three times in a row. is not to be believed. The far so annoying. I'm friends with a lot of people. They cannot believe what happened to the United States of America. We're no longer respected. They they don't like us. We give them everything they want that they, they think we're stupid. They, they don't like us people. because of you, because of what you did, dude. They do nothing for us. What this man has done is absolutely criminal. But you want to put it on him but what about your felony convictions? The Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. This morning, the court ruled on yet another abortion case, temporarily allowing emergency abortions to continue in Idaho. Despite I mean, come on. If, if you really think that President Trump, what Trump is saying holds any water, then you're a fucking stupid gay retard. The federal government still plays a role in whether or not women have access to abortion pills. They're used in about two-thirds of all abortions. As president, would you block abortion medication? First of all, the Supreme Court just approved the abortion pill, and I agree with their decision to have done that, and I will not block it. And if you look at this whole question that you're asking, a complex but not really complex, 51 years ago, you had Roe v. Wade, and everybody wanted to get it back to the states. Everybody, without exception, Democrats, Republicans, liberals, conservatives, everybody wanted it back. Religious leaders. And what I did is I put three great Supreme Court justices on the court, and they have to vote in favor of killing Roe v. Wade and moving it back to the states. This is something that everybody wanted. Now, 10 years ago or so, they started talking about how many weeks and how much this getting into other things. But every legal scholar 
throughout the world, the most respected, wanted it for its action states. I did that. Now the states are working it out. If you look at Ohio, decision that was it was a, an end result that was a little bit more liberal than you would have thought. Uh, Kansas, I would say the same thing. Uh, Texas is different. Florida is different. But they're all making their own decisions right now. And right now, the states control it. That's the vote of the people. Like Ronald Reagan, I believe in the exceptions. I am a person that believes. And frankly, I think it's important to believe in the exceptions. Some people, you have to follow your heart. Some people don't believe in that. But I believe in the exceptions for rape incest and the life of the mother. I think it's very important. Some people don't. Follow your heart. But you have to get elected also. And because that has to do with other things. You've got to get elected. The problem they have, they're radical because they will take the life of the child in the eighth month, the ninth month, and even after birth. After birth, if you look at the former governor of Virginia, he was willing to do this. He said, we'll put the baby aside and we'll determine what we do with the baby, meaning we'll kill the baby. What happened is we brought it back to the states and the country is now coming together on this issue. It's been a great thing. Thank you. President Biden. It's been a terrible thing. What's your time? But the fact is that the vast majority of constitutional scholars support a bill when it was decided. Support a bill. Mm -hmm. That was that's this idea that they were all against it. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, it's at this the point that I think this thing should have been rescheduled because Biden can barely talk. Can barely hold up his defense. What your circumstances are, what you can tell. The idea that states are able to do this is well, like saying, well, they can turn civil rights back to the states, let the state have a different role. Look, there's so many young women who have been, including the young woman who just was murdered, and they went to the funeral. Uh, the idea that she was murdered by, by, by an immigrant coming in. They talk about that. But here's the deal. There's a lot of more young women who are raped by their by their in laws, by their by, by their spouses, or their brothers and sisters. But well, it's just it's, it's just ridiculous. And they can do nothing about it. So they try to rest when they cross state lines. Thank you. There have been many young women murdered by the same people he allows to come across our border. We have a border that's the most dangerous place anywhere in the world. Consider the most dangerous place anywhere in the world. And he opened it up, and these killers are coming into our country. And they are raping and killing women. And it's a terrible thing. As far as the abortion is concerned, it is now back with the states. The states are voting. Uh, in many cases, the, it's frankly a very liberal decision. In many cases, it's the opposite. But they're voting, and it's bringing it back to the vote of the people, which is what everybody wanted, including the founders, if they knew about this issue, which, frankly, they did. But they would have done Everybody wanted brought back. Ronald Reagan wanted it brought back. He wasn't able to get it. Everybody wanted it brought back. And many presidents had tried to get it back. I was the one to do it. And again, this gives it the vote of the people, and that's where they wanted it. Every legal scholar wanted it that way. Staying on the topic of abortion, President Biden, seven states, I'll let you do that, uh, this is the same topic, seven states have no legal restrictions on how far into a pregnancy a woman can obtain an abortion. Do you support any legal limits on how late a woman should be able to terminate a pregnancy? I support a role in any way. Which had three trimesters. The first time between the woman and the doctor. The second time between the doctor and an extreme situation. The third time between the doctor, I mean, in between the, the woman and the state. The idea that the politicians, the, the, that the founders want the politicians to be the ones making decisions about a woman's health is ridiculous. That's the last. No politician should make that decision. A doctor should be making that decision. That's how it should be wrong. That's what you're going to do. And if I'm elected, I'm going to restore Roe v. Wade. So that means he can take the life of the baby in the ninth month and even after birth, because some states, Democrat run, take it after birth. Again, the governor, former governor of Virginia, put the baby down, then we decide what to do with it. So he's, in, he's willing to, as we say, rip the baby out of the womb in the ninth month and kill the baby. Nobody wants that to happen, Democrat or Republican. Nobody wants it to happen. That is simply not true. The Roe v. Wade does not provide for that. That's not the circumstance. Only a woman's life is in danger, she's going to die. That's the only circumstance in which that can happen. But we are not for late-term abortion, period. Period, period. 
Just keep putting words in Biden's mouth, Trump. It only just makes you look more stupid. We don't think that's a good thing. We think it's a radical thing. We think the Democrats are the radicals, not the Republicans. For 51 years, that was the law. 51 years, cut the colors. Right way to go. 51 years, and it was taken away because this guy was converting conservative members on the Supreme Court. Takes credit for taking it away. What's he going to do? What's he going to do? In fact, if the MAGA Republicans, he gets elected, and the MAGA Republicans control the Congress, and they pass a universal ban on abortion, period, across the board, at six weeks or seven or eight or ten weeks, something very, very conservative. Is he going to sign that bill? I'll veto it. He'll sign it. Thank you. Let's turn now to the issue of immigration and border security. President Biden, a record number of migrants have illegally crossed the southern border on your watch. Overwhelming border states and overburdening cities such as New York and Chicago, and in some cases causing real safety and security concerns. Given that, why should voters begin to solve this crisis? We worked very hard to get a bipartisan agreement that not only changed all of that, but made sure that we are in a situation where you had no circumstance where they could come across the border with the number of border communities there are now. We significantly increased the number of asylum significantly. By the way, the Border Patrol endorsed me, endorsed my position. In addition to that, we found ourselves in a situation where when he was president, he was taking separating babies from their mother and putting them in cages, making sure they were in the, that the families were separated. That's not the right way to go. What I've done since I've changed the law, what's happening? I've changed it in a way that now you're in a situation where there are 40% fewer people coming across the border illegally. It's better than me left office. And I'm ready to continue to move until we get the total ban on uh, the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we're going to do with more border control and more uh, asylum. President Trump, uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. Look, yeah. See, that's the problem that I have with this, because, see, it's very easy for him to make a comment like that when if he probably just picked a better day where he had more of his voice back, we probably wouldn't have this issue. Number of terrorists coming into our country right now, all terrorists all over the world, not just but please, Trump, continue to enlighten us with your wisdom. And this guy, we're just all waiting for it. Legislation because I didn't have legislation. I said, close the border. We have the safest border in history. In that final couple of months of my presidency, we had, according to Border Patrol, who is great, and by the way, who endorsed me for president, but I won't say that, but they endorsed me for president. Brandon, just speak to him. But look, we had the safest border in history. Now we have the worst border in history. There's never been anything like it. And people are dying all over the place, including the people that are coming up in the caravan problems. The only terrorist who got anything across the border is one who came along and killed three on that administration, killed the Al Qaeda person, and then the administration, killed three American soldiers, killed three American soldiers. That's the only terrorist that's there. I'm not saying that no terrorist ever got there. The idea, they're very welcoming to you. It's simply not true. There's no data to support what he said. Once again, he's exaggerating, he's lying. President Trump, um, staying on the topic of immigration, you said that you're going to carry out, quote, the largest domestic deportation operation in American history, unquote. Does that mean that you will deport every undocumented immigrant in America, including those who have jobs, including those whose spouses are citizens, and including those who have lived here for decades? And if so, how will you do it? Uh, just one second. You said we kill three people. The people we killed are El Baghdadi. And Salamani, the two greatest terrorists, biggest terrorists anywhere in the world. Wait, Trump was just asked a question, and he says, oh, wait a minute, let me go back to continuing to bash Biden. Yeah, that's what we need, somebody that doesn't answer questions and just wants to bash their opponent. California and Please. state in the union, because we don't have borders anymore. Every state is now a border. And because of his ridiculous, don't insane, give me that shit. policies, people are coming in and they're killing our citizens at a level that we've never seen. We call it migrant crime. I call it Biden migrant crime. They're killing our citizens at a level that we've never seen before. And you're reading it like these three incredible young girls over the last few days. 
one of them I just spoke to the mother and they just had the funeral for this girl, 12 years old. This is horrible what's taking place. What's taking place in our country, we're literally an uncivilized country now. He doesn't want it to be, he just doesn't know. He opened the borders, nobody's ever seen anything like And we have to get a lot of these people out and we have to get them out fast because they're going to destroy our country. Just take a look at where they're living. They're living in luxury hotels in New York City and other places. Our veterans are on the street, they're dying because he doesn't care about our veterans. He doesn't care, he doesn't like the military at all. And he doesn't care about our veterans. Nobody's been worse. I have the highest approval rating for veterans taking care of the VA. He has the worst. He's gotten rid of all the things that I approved. Joyce, that I got through Congress, all of the different things I approved, they abandoned. We are by far the highest, and now it's down in less than half because he's done all these great things that we did. And I think he did it just because I approved it, which is great. But he has killed so many people at our border by Thank allowing you, all of these people to come in. It's a very sad day in America. Every single thing he said is a lie. Every single one. For example, veterans are a hell of a lot better off since I've got the backpack. Well, to be honest, yeah, everything he does say is a lie. Because all he's trying to do is just bash down his opponent. Not trying to answer any questions. I great respect for veterans. I spent my son spent a year in Iraq. Later when I next one of the firm, he's came back with stayed for work with Bus Dolan. I was recently in in, in uh, France for a D Day. And I spoke to all about those heroes that died. I went to the World War II cemetery, World War One cemetery a few years ago to he was standing with his first star general, and he told me, he said, I don't want to go in there because they're a bunch of losers and suckers. My son was not a loser, he was not a sucker. You're the sucker, and you're the loser. President Trump? Uh, first of all, that was a made up quote suckers and losers. They yeah, it was in why the even the bring family. his son into right. this? Focus on the uh, debate. We put it in commercials. We've notified him. We had 19 people that said I didn't say it. And think of this who would say I'm at a cemetery or I'm talking about our veterans? Because nobody's taking better care. I'm so glad this came up and he brought it up. There's nobody that's taking better care of our soldiers than I have. To think that I would, in front of generals and others, say suckers and losers. We have 19 people that said it was never said by me. It was made up by him, just like Russia, Russia, Russia was made up, just like the 51 intelligence agents are made up. Just like the new thing with the 16 economists are talking, it's the same thing. 51 intelligence agents said that the laptop was Russian disinformation. It wasn't. That came from his son, Hunter. It wasn't Russian disinformation. He made up the suckers and losers, so he should apologize to me right now. Four star general stand your side, on your staff, he said, you said, period. That's number one. And number two, the idea, the idea that I have to apologize to you for anything along the line. We've done more for veterans than any president has. You shouldn't have to apologize to him for shit. You should apologize to him for just up here bashing instead of answering questions. You dumb fucking retard. They're doing more for veterans than ever before in our history. Thank you so much. The top of the foreign policy. I swear to God, anybody that follows this guy is retarded. Third year. Former President Trump, Russian President Vladimir Putin says. What kind of shit is this anyway? Keeps the Ukrainian territory it has already claimed, and Ukraine abandons its bid to join NATO. Are Putin's terms acceptable to you? First of all. Our veterans and our soldiers can't stand this guy. They can't stand him. They think he's the worst commander in chief, and that's what you call him, that we've ever had. They can't stand him. So let's get that straight. And they like me more than just about any of them. And that's based on every single bit of information. As far as Russia and Ukraine, if we had a real president... Yeah, president you know, knew, Biden, I gotta say, I'm Biden. laughing at that, too. He would have never, he would have Plenty of shit I ever Ukraine. heard. A lot of people are dead right now, much more than people know. You know, they talk about numbers. You can double those numbers, maybe triple those numbers. 
They did nothing to stop it. In fact, I think he encouraged Russia from going in. I'll tell you what happened. He was so bad with Afghanistan. It was such a horrible embarrassment. Most embarrassing. Do you have Biden mistaken for yourself? Because. The incompetence and he should. should yeah. Those I'm just like starting to wonder. So he's got no love laws. Such fucking bullshit. No general got fired for the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country, Afghanistan, where we let billions of dollars of equipment behind. We lost 13 beautiful soldiers and 38 soldiers were obliterated. And by the way, we left people behind too. We left American citizens behind. When Putin saw that, he said, you know what? I think we're going to go in and maybe take my, this was his dream. I talked to him about it, his dream. The difference is he never would have invaded Ukraine. Never. It's like Israel would have never invaded in a million years by Hamas. You know why? Because Iran was broke with me. I wouldn't let anybody do business with them. They ran out of money. They were broke. They had no money for Hamas. They had no money for anything. No money for terror. That's why you had no terror at all during my administration. This place, the whole world is blowing up under him. President I've never heard so much malarkey in my whole life. But the fact of the matter is that if we're in a situation where, let's take the last point first, Iran attacked American troops. Yeah, Iran it's a load of it, that's for sure. Troops. And he did nothing about it. He said, no, my name's Preface. And they attacked. He said, they're just having headaches. That's all it is. But he didn't do a thing when they attacked her place, number one. Number two. Instead of focusing on downgrading each other, why don't we focus on the problems that America has and try answering the questions in an idealistic way that would help the American voter rather than just making this tear each other down. Though Biden has to that's what he wanted to risk. Tear him down because all Trump wants to do is tear Biden down. So they've lost over they've lost thousands of dollars. I guess Biden's kind of just being backed into a wall at this point. For one minute, I just want to go back to my original question, which is were Putin's terms acceptable to you? Keeping the territory in Ukraine. No, they're not acceptable. But look, this is a war that never should have started. If we had a leader in this war, he led everybody along. He's given $200 billion now or more to Ukraine. He's given $200 billion. That's a lot of money. I don't think there's ever been anything like it. Every time that Zelensky comes to this country, he walks away with $60 billion. He's the greatest salesman ever. And I'm not knocking him. I'm not knocking anything. I'm only saying if the money that we're spending on this war and we shouldn't be spending. It should have never happened. I will have that war settled between Putin and Zelensky as president-elect before I take office on January 20th. You know, no, I don't think that you will, Trump. I think you'll make it even worse. And I think you'll start World War Three. Get it settled fast before I take office. You have to say The fact is that Putin is a war criminal. He's killed thousands and thousands of people. And he has made one thing clear. He wants to reestablish what was part of the Soviet Empire, not just a piece. He wants all of Ukraine. That's what he wants. And then do you think he'll stop there? Do you think he'll stop when he, 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 he takes Ukraine? What do you think happens to Poland? What do you think of the big military? What do you think happens to those NATO countries? And so if you want a war, you ought to find out what he's going to do because if in fact he does what he says and walks away, by the way, all that money we give Ukraine what if we make here in the United States we give them the weapons, not the money at this point. And, the, and our NATO allies produce as much weapons for Ukraine as we have. That's why it's, that's why we're strong. Thank you. Moving on to the Middle East. In October, Hamas attacked Israel, killing more than a thousand people and taking hundreds of hostages. Among those held and thought to still be alive are five Americans. Israel's response has killed thousands of Palestinians and created a humanitarian crisis in Gaza. President Biden, you've put forward a proposal to resolve this conflict, but so far Hamas has not released the remaining hostages and Israel is continuing its military offensive in Gaza. 
So what additional leverage will you use to get Hamas and Israel to end the war? You have to on the war. Just going back to Ukraine for one second. We have the ocean separating us. The European nations together. So as you can see, Biden was trying to answer the question. Now let's see how much Trump answers this question before he starts uploading on Biden again. The Secretary General of NATO said Trump did the most incredible job I've ever seen. He wouldn't, they wouldn't have any, they were going out of business. We were spending almost 100% of the money was, that was paid by us. He didn't do that. He's getting all, he oh. to ask these people to put up the money. That lasted about as long as it did. Did you guys just see that? He didn't do that. Because of location, because we have Answer the question, Trump. Nice to man. Israel and, and Hamas. Israel is the one that wants to go. He said the only one that wants to keep going is Hamas. Actually, Israel is the one. And you should let him go and let him finish the job. He doesn't want to do it. He's become like a Palestinian. But they don't like him because he's a very bad Palestinian. He's a weak one. President Biden, you have a minute? I've never heard so much foolishness. This is the guy who wants to get out of NATO. You can stay in NATO, and he's going to pull out of NATO. The idea that we have our strength lies in our alliances as well. I can agree with that. Foolishness that it's fine. A point of war in Europe, a major war in Europe. What happens if, in fact, you have continued to go into NATO? We have an Article 5 agreement. Attack on one is attack on all. If you want to start the nuclear war, you keep talking about go ahead, let Putin go in and control Ukraine, and then move on to Poland and other places. What happens then? He has no idea what the hell he's talking about. Uh, and by the way, I got 50 other nations around the world to support Ukraine, including Japan and South Korea, because they understand that this, this, this kind of dislocation has a serious threat to the whole world peace. No, no major war in Europe has ever been able to contain just to Europe. President Trump, just to follow up, would you support the creation of an independent Palestinian state in order to achieve peace in the region? I'd have to see, but before we do that, the problem we have is that we spend all the money. So they kill us on trade. I make great trade deals with the European nations. See, before we do that, before we answer the question, there he goes again. The United States, and they were written no cars, no one, anything that we have. But we're supposed to take the cars, their food, their everything, their agriculture. I changed that. But the big thing I changed is they don't want to pay. And the only reason that he can play games with NATO is because I got them to put up hundreds of millions of dollars. I said, point fingers again, up. point said, fingers no, again. Here we go. Support NATO if you don't pay. They asked me that question. Would you guard us against Russia at a very secret meeting of the 28 uh, states at that time, uh, nations at that time? And they said, no, if you don't pay, I won't do that. And you know what happened? Is this a political debate or is this Grumpy Old Men Part 3? Now we're in the same position. I'm confused as to whether I'm watching a legit political debate 
or two old men angry at each other. Some of them stormed the capital to stop. I'm really confused right now. Counting of electoral votes. And this is what I'm supposed to be voting for in November? Are you fucking kidding me right now? For your actions and inaction on January 6th and worry that you'll do it again. Why do they too many believe that? And let me tell you about January 6th. On January 6th, we had a great border. Nobody coming through, very few. On January 6th, we were energy independent. On January 6th, we had the lowest taxes ever. We had the lowest regulations ever. On January 6th, we were respected all over the world. All over the world, we were respected. And then he comes in, and we're now left at. We're like a bunch of stupid people. The, what happened to the United States' reputation under this man's leadership is horrible. So he's pushing this off onto Biden when we know damn well this was his doing. You have eight seconds left. My question was, what do you say to those voters who believe that you violated your constitutional oath through your See, the moderator had to remind him my question was, this guy isn't answering questions. He's putting all of his faults onto Biden. This is not a debate. This is two people putting each other down. Well, happening on one side. The other side's trying to defend himself. In writing, turned it down, the mayor of, of D.C. They turned it down. I offered 10000 because I could see. I had virtually nothing to do. They asked me to go make a speech. I could see what was happening. Everybody was saying they're going to be there on January 6th. They're going to be there. And I said, you know what? That's a lot of people coming. You could feel it. You could feel it, too, and you could feel it. And I said, they ought to have some National Guard or whatever. And I offered it to her, and she now admits that she turned it down. And it was the same day she was, I don't know, she can't be very happy with her daughter because it made her into a liar. She said, I take full responsibility for January 6th. President Biden. Look, he encouraged those folks to go to Capitol Hill, number one. I sat in that dining room while the office. She sat there for three hours. Three hours watching being being paid by his vice president and a number of his colleagues and Republicans had as well to do something, to call for a stop, to end it. Instead he talked they talked about the GOP patriots and, and, and the great patrons of America. In fact, he says he'll not forgive them for what they've done. You know, and they've been convicted. He says he wants to keep for sentences and say that, that you know he went to every single court in the nation. I don't know how many cases. How many scores of cases, including the Supreme Court. And they said, they said, no, no, this guy, this guy is responsible for doing what has been and was done. He didn't do a damn thing. And these people should be in jail. And they should be. Yeah, thank goodness for captioning. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't be able to look after this either. That's why I think they should have rescheduled it when his voice was better. So you could kind of stand a chance. Some people that are so innocent, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. What you have done, and you've destroyed the lives look at of so this, many just people. Slam Biden rather than when they ripped down, uh, answering the questions. You go to Minnesota, Minneapolis, what they've done there with the fires all over the city. If I didn't bring in the National Guard, that city would have been destroyed. When you look at all of the... They took over big chunks of Seattle. I was all set to bring in the National Guard. They heard that. They saw them coming, and they left immediately. What he said about this whole nap subject time yet? is so off. Peacefully patriotic. One other thing. The unselected committee, which is basically two horrible Republicans that are all gone now out of office, and Democrats, all Democrats, they destroyed and deleted all of the information they found because they found out we were right. We were right. And they deleted and destroyed all of the information. They should go to jail for that. If a Republican did that, they'd go to Thank you, President Trump. President Biden, I want to give you a minute. The only person on the stage is a convicted felon. This man I'm looking at right now. Look at him just screaming, they should go to jail. He just gets cut off. And yeah, Biden, look what he says. The convicted felon to his right. Yeah, let's not forget about the trial that he's having to go through. Oh, but 
We just don't want to bring that up, right? Because Trump does no wrong. Just get a clue, people. Quit acting like such a fucking retard. Just get a fucking clue. We're talking about that. It allows the people to attack that catch What are you going to do? I'm going to uh, give you a, a, a minute, President Trump, for a follow-up question I have. Um, after a jury convicted you of 34 felonies last month, you said if re-elected, you would, quote, have every right to go after, unquote, your political opponents. You just talked about members of the select committee on January 6th going to jail. But your main political opponent is standing on stage with you tonight. Can you clarify exactly what it means about feeling you have every right to go after your political opponents? Well, I said my retribution is going to be success. We're going to make this country successful again, because right now it's a failing nation. My retribution is going to be success. But when he talks about a convicted felon, his son is a convicted felon at a very high level. His son is convicted. Be so convicted why do we have to time. bring he's his son into before, this? This is a debate between the two of them. Can we leave family out of this? He gets out of office. Joe can be a convicted felon with all of the things that he's done. He's done horrible things. All of the death. But has Biden put, done it? Uh, telling the Ukrainian people that we're going to want a billion dollars. You can change. Oh trust. yeah. I'm oh, Trump. I might have done so convicted that, felon stuff. Oh, but go. look at the current that president's son and what he right. did. So unless you change your process, His son you is know, not running for president. This man, you're lucky. Why are we you're bringing lucky. that into it? We have a system that was rigged this, and disgusting. We that much of a fucking retard. You have said, I'm coming right to you, sir. You, you, well, you want to respond? Go ahead. I'll give you a minute to respond. The idea that I did anything wrong relative to what you're talking about is outrageous. It's simply a lie, number one. Number two, the idea that you have a right to seek retribution against any American just because you're president is wrong. It's simply wrong. No president's ever spoken like that before. No president in our history has spoken like that before. Number three. You know, he's right. He may be barely able to talk, but he's right. I didn't have sex with the porn star, number one. Number two, that was a case that was started and moved. They moved a high-ranking official at DOJ into the Manhattan DA's office. Well, you start that gave case. the bitch some money at least, and you did something. Terrible judge, a horrible Might as judge. well have. The prosecutor were all high-ranking Democrats appointed. Oh, no terrible judge, horrible judge. Yeah, a judge that deserves to have your ass convicted. A judge that's properly doing their fucking job. I have no idea what these cases are. When they found out about these cases, you know what they did? My poll numbers went up way up. You know that because you're reporting it. And we took in more money in the last two weeks than we've ever taken in in the history of, of any campaign, I don't think any campaign has ever taken hundreds of millions of dollars came pouring in because the public knows it's a scam and it's a guy that's after his political opponent because he can't win fair and square. Thank you, President Trump. President Biden, you have said, quote, Donald Trump and his MAGA Republicans are determined to destroy American democracy. Do you believe that the tens of millions of Americans who are likely to vote for President Trump will be voting against American democracy? The more they know about what he's done, yes. The more they know about what he's done. And there's a lot more coming. He's got a lot of cases around the world coming out. He's got, he's got a whole range of issues. Yeah, and it's no secret on what he's done either. I mean, we can all look it up. It's all accessible online. Thank you, Google. President said that I'm going to seek retribution. Did you ever hear any president say that I thought he had some good ideas? What got me involved around the first place after my son had died and decided to interact because What are we doing allowing a convicted felon to run for president anyway? Can somebody explain that to me? You can explain that part in the comments for sure. There's the comment political debate. Young woman, I spoke to the mother. 
intention. They asked him, they said, what, what, what do you think of those people? The people, the ones who got killed, the one who tried to stop it, and the one who said, I think they're fine people on both sides. What American president would ever say Nazis coming out of fields carrying torches and saying, the same as said it by carrying swastikas or fine people. This is the guy who says Hitler's done some good things. I'd like to know what they are. The good things Hitler's done, that's what he said. This guy has no sense of American democracy. Jake, well, if you know that, sir, has been totally wiped out because when you see the sentence, it said 100% exoneration of this. So he just keeps thinking, he says he ran because of Charlottesville. He didn't run because of Charlottesville. He ran because it was his last chance at that he's not equipped to be president. You know it, and I know it. It's ridiculous. We have to debate. We're trying to justify his presidency. His presidency is, is without question, the worst president, the worst presidency in the history of our country. We shouldn't be having a debate about it. There's nothing to debate. He Yet you have so done so much more or worse in your presidency, Trump, that no other president has ever done. Do you not see that? How far do you have your head up your fucking ass? All you have to do is listen to what we said at the time. And the idea that somehow that's the only reason I ran. I ran because I was worried a guy like this guy could get elected. Biden's so, getting pissed, and rightly so. I'd be pissed too, man. Carrie knows that. Like, Carrie fuck this shit. That he didn't deserve to be president. He didn't deserve to be president at all. And the idea that he's talking about all this being fabricated. We saw it in our own eyes. We saw what happened on January 6th. We saw the people breaking through the windows. We saw people occupying their... His own vice president. Look, there's a reason why. 40 of his 44 top cabinet officers refused to endorse him this time. His vice president has endorsed him this time. So why? Why? They know him well. They serve him. Why are they not endorsing him? Thank you, President Biden. We're going to be right back with more from the CNN presidential debate. Whatever you do, do it for less at Harbor Freight. Life's, Life's better, better when you feel protected and enjoy your dreams under the American Family Insurance. Well, I think we heard enough, guys, don't you? I mean, this is just beyond stupidity stupidity and ignorance at its finest all right well that's my reaction to the debate that occurred the other night on cnn and uh yeah i think i lost a few brain cells listening to that especially all the time anyways i hope you enjoyed this reaction video like subscribe turn on notifications stay alert We'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Check out my channel for more uh, gaming content and music content on the way. Thank you.